How to make a children's picture book using free programs and public domain content. Welcome, my name is Faye B. Bolton and I'm the author of nine children's picture books. And today I'm going to show you how you can create your own children's book using free content and free software. So you can publish your book on Kindle or on create space so let's get started now it's best to use public domain content which means you use content that doesn't belong to anybody and you can use it in any shape form format you want without getting yourself into trouble now one of the sites um, that I recommend going to for public domain content is actually open clipart openclipart.org so once you've actually got your story written, uh, now let's start building the pages to go along with that story. So I find that Open Clip Art is a great way of finding some illustrations um, that you can use and you can change around and everything else like that. So first of all, I need a background for my story, for, my, for this particular page. So I came to Open Clip Art Backgrounds and what I'm going to do, I'm going to want to use this one. So uh, you can click on that and then it gives you different options as to whether it's going to be small, medium, big. So I want it big to begin with. So I'm going to download the actual item. As you see it's free, there's no, they're not asking for anything. Um, you know, they make money by advertising to you, but other than that, these are all free downloads. It doesn't cost you anything to access these images. So I'm going to download the image and then I'm going to access it. Here it is, and then I'm going to use the free program called Paint.net. Paint.net uh, is a pretty simple program to use where you can totally customize images. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to use Paint.net to create your book. So the main thing to remember when creating using paint.net to say it's a free program that comes with windows uh, sorry mac users uh, this is windows i'm using a windows computer paint.net is free and downloadable and just some basic elements here but the thing to remember when using paint.net is the layering system so hopefully today i'm going to show you step by step so you can clearly understand how to use paint.net so I like this picture but I, I need I want to make some changes to it it's not I don't like these trees at all so I want to change them so nice thing about paint.net if you come over here and click on this magic wand if you click on that and then you click on an image it highlights it and you can actually remove that so you can either go to edit cut or you can press the delete key on your keyboard. So I want to get rid of all, all these trees because I want to use some different trees. So I'm going to click on all these. So I'm going to delete each one. So I got rid of that part. Now I want to get rid of the stem. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to remove the other tree because I don't want any of these trees. I want to delete each one. You can do it this way. Or you can, as I'll show you shortly, you can use the eraser. But right now I'm just going to use the delete. So I'm pressing the magic wand and then I am clicking the delete key on my computer. I want to get rid of this tree too. So I'll get rid of all this. There we go. And I'm going to delete now the last one. Alright, so I've got the trees deleted. So that looks funny. So now we need to fill in and also erase the rest of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the eraser 
right here. It's give me a two. That's too tiny. I need it to be a much bigger space so I can erase the where the trees were. So I'm going to go ahead and just erase that. See, quite nicely erase is what I need to get rid of. And the same with this one. And this one. And then the final one. Okay, so we've got a bit of an outline now on some of these, so I need to get just get rid of that little bit of a outline. So let's get rid of that too. So we need this to blend in as best possible. So I'm just releasing that to release that. All right, so I've got that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in this section. So I like the blue skyline I want to keep that but as you can see it's this is a PNG and it's transparent and I want it to go darker so I'm going to click on the picture itself and it's going to show me what color it is so I want this to be filled in so what I'm going to do I'm going to add a skyline behind it so to do that I'm going to add another layer so we're going to click on that I've already on this image I'll show you once again i am used the color picker to pick out what color the sky is and as you can see down here it's showing me what color the sky is so now I need to come to this layer and I want to fill in the background shape so I'm going to use a shape on the layer and I want to fill it in with the bluish color which is kind of this color so let's go ahead and do that now you see it did the full color so all we need to do is because I want it behind is drag that layer behind the picture and see what happened you see how it filled that in I'll show you again if it goes in front of you see all right so as you can see it's filled everything in but oh I didn't remove some black here so what we can do instead of totally removing it you can just uncheck it and then it goes away if you recheck it again it shows up so right now I've still got a little bit of black marks so I need to just fix those so let me go ahead and erase that area with the eraser again so I can get rid of that there's a little bit more here by the we got a little bit more here. I say it's nice to use the checker because I say it just to I just check it again and I can see which area I need to just fix. All right, so I think that's good right now. Cool. I don't think we can see any black outline. So now I've got my blue sky. So now I need to just level off the green. So once again, we need to be on the picture and we're going to have to find out what color the green grass is. So it's this. Click on this. As you see, it displays that. I'm going to use the paintbrush here and I'm just going to fill in the green grass where it was missing. Yeah, touch that up a little bit. Fix that little bit there. And just re remove this for a second. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, here's the layer, so I can click on that again to get it back again. Now I'm going to make this larger. So I just need to fix this section here. So I'm, I'm on the background image itself. I'm going to click on the color picker. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to put a line. This is this where it says half, like a half sign here. This actually is a way for making lines so right now it's at 100 it needs to be a lot thinner than that I'm gonna try a 10 let's see how that looks that's not bad I'm gonna take it down to about an 8 that looks pretty good now this you can move a little bit 
so that looks good there so now we need to fix it a little bit more I need the black so I'm going to click on the black color go a lot thinner with my line to maybe a one to see if we can fix this there's that let's enter and click this one again enter and I'm just going to touch this bit up here for some reason. Got a little bit of blue there. I'm going to touch that bit up there. I'll give it that. All right. And then this is grey. Let me just touch this bit up so it looks a little bit better. A little grey with the line. Try maybe the one. Should probably go a little thicker. Take it to maybe a four, and that fills in that grey. So I got that. Uh, I've still got a few little black lines here, so once again, I'm just going to check this and just erase this a bit more to get rid of those black lines. Showing up. See how that looks. Recheck that so it displays. Alright, so that's not bad there. And I'm going to fix this little section. See how so we'll do this again. So let's see how that's looking. And that's there. Okay, we'll just. So what I'll do, I'll just fill these in and I'll be right back to show you the next stage. Okay, I filled those little sections in right there. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of this. For some reason, it's showing. Display in there. And I don't want to get rid of that. So let me get rid of this. Okay, let's go back right there. All right, so let's see what we got right now. Okay, so I got what we want. So that's pretty good. So now I want some trees. So let me see what I've got so far. So into my pictures and just say background one. Call it a country background. And save that. Right. Okay, we can go ahead and we can actually crop this down so it's not as big. So use the top, this one here. Click on, I'm going to get rid of the, bl the black outline too. Click on the corner all the way down and just go to that. And then come up to image and crop to select all right so that's got rid of that so let me go ahead and save that section all right so at least we have a base now to begin with so i would like i'm going to use some trees so let me see what trees i've got we can go here trees okay i have a folder actually with some trees from from some free uh, public domain images. You can also go back and see what trees we have in the open clip art. Oh, we have a nice selection of trees here too. So you can select from any of these trees if you want as well. That's quite a nice. Let's see what that tree looks like. Well, that's not too bad. Oh, you have, this one actually looks pretty good too. So you could even use that tree. So you find some trees in here, but I'm going to use this one. All right, so I'm going to bring that in. So to bring in 
So remember, the main thing to remember when you're creating images using paint is to put everything in as a layer. I've got my base I'm working from. Now everything is going to build up in layers. I recommend doing the layers just in case you want to change something. If it's all in the same layer, you try to change something, you're going to remove other things as well. So hopefully you understand that. I'll just say that again. Create everything you build, build it in layers. So you add something, add another layer, add another layer, another layer as you add things to your main picture. Maybe I'll just, I'll demonstrate that so you kind of get an idea of what I'm referring to. All right, so I'm going to bring in, um, let me use, I'm going to use the, the guys from my, uh, my little zombie characters. I just did a couple of children's books using zombie characters so here as my characters. Well, zombie characters. So I'm going to bring this guy in. All right. So here he is. Oops. Bring him in. I just want to demonstrate here. To resize a character correctly, you cl click the shift key. So if I bring this guy in, if I decide I want to, to put in a square here, add a box or something, and I want to fill it in, see like that. This is an example. If I decide, you know what, I, I, I want to put some things here, but I need to do, move my zombie over, what will happen is when you click on this, this is this section here, and I click on my zombie to move him over, you see the box or the other object moves over as well. But I wanted that to stay there. So that's what happens if you put things on the same layer. Whatever is on that layer will move as well. So make sure you don't do that. Make sure you have things on separate layers. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So to delete a layer, you click on the X. Make sure it's highlighted and then click on the X to delete that layer. All right. And then you can see this line, this dotted line around this image. You want to always make sure you get rid of that. So just press the Enter key. If it doesn't go away, click on click on outside of it, outside of the picture, and click on the Enter key. Because what happens if there's something there, you actually chop it in half or chop some of it off, and it loses part of itself. So always remember when you're going to add something, do not have anything highlighted. Otherwise, it can chop pictures in half, and and you can end up chopping a character's arm off or a leg off and it's totally spoils the picture and you have to start all over again so i'm going to bring in a tree so i'm going to bring it in as a layer so i'm going to open the layer and part from files and i'm going to go to actually my zombie to halloween file and i believe the tree is in here go to find the tree it's actually in here somewhere here it is and I'm gonna click on that and open it okay that's a bit too big but as you can see you see now it has that layer so I need to resize this tree click on the shift key and click on the corner of the picture to resize it so it stays in proportion all right so here we go I'm gonna reproportion this so I want to move the tree so over here all right, and press enter so you're not, so it's, it's rounded as such. All right, the pitch is too big again, so I'm just gonna cut this smaller again, so make sure it's the size I want, just highlight it, and then just snip it again. So just click on image, and then click on crop. All right, so I'm back to the size. So now I have this tree, so I can move it whatever I want. If I decide I need to move it around, click on the top right icon and move selected pixels and I can move it around a bit right now it looks pretty good there right then press the enter key so you're not on that particular image anymore so nothing's highlighted so let's see what size this image is all right so when you create a children's books of course uh, if you're going to do a Kindle, it's kind of like 9 by 6 is pretty good size, 9 high by 6 wide. Uh, if you're going to actually create a paperback, then you know you can vary that size by size. Uh, if I want to make this into a 
Kindle book. It needs to be nice and by six. But today I'm going to show you, yeah, I'm going to show you how to do illustrations for Kindle. So it needs to be around about nine high by six. So I'm going to change the size of this image. So I'm going to crop some things off. So I know for certain the pitch of the tree has to move over. So what I'm going to do is actually, I like the tree, but I'm going to unselect it. That way it's not going to get chipped off right now while I size this picture. And hopefully that made sense. I need to resize this picture so it will be the correct size for when I upload it to Kindle. So we're going to go to image and we're going to go to resize. The best pixel resolution is 300. So first of all, I'm going to select 300 pixels. That gives you a much brighter look. And then we're going to go in here and it needs to be nine inches high by six. So I'm going to uncheck the maintain aspect ratio because it needs to be the correct size for me. So it's important right now that I get the height correct. The height is nine inches. So let's take a look at what's, what it's gonna give me at nine inches. So nine inches high, but the image is actually 12 inch, almost 13 inches wide. So I need it to be six. So at least we need to slice this at least down in the middle to get it to the right size. So here we go, click on that, and that should bring me to about there. Okay, probably about there. So I'm losing my clouds, and I don't want to do that. So let's first of all stop, and I want to move the clouds over. So what we're going to do, we're highlighted on this background picture. I'm going to click on the magic wand, I'm going to click on the cloud, and that's what I want. So we're going to go to edit. I want to go to copy. I want to put a new layer in. Remember, every time we do something, we need a new layer and we're going to paste. All right. So now once that's pasted, you see how it's highlighted. I'm going to move it over. So let's move the cloud over class I'll do exactly the same thing I can I'm gonna keep these together as a layer so that's fine right now so let me click on that so once again we have to go back to the picture the layer where the actual picture is click on the magic wand click on that click copy go to the layer that the other cloud is on and click paste so I'm gonna move this over okay it's a little small so sometimes you have to get there we go and I'm gonna move that to about that's probably about right there and maybe move it over a little bit because the tree is gonna go there so maybe we could put this over here So I'm going to be chopping this in half, so I don't want to lose the cloud. And so I'm going to undo this at the moment. So I'm going to move. I'm going to do move the cloud over and to about there. So I think that might work. All right. So I'll just move those clouds over. It doesn't have the black line. You can, if you want, go ahead and outline them. But I don't feel it necessary. It stands out too much. So now let's go ahead and crop this down. We need this to be a nine by six. So this, let's see what that takes us to. All right, we can crop the image, crop size. So let's see what the image is at now. It's now almost, so we're just a little bit off. It's nine by 6.8. So we just take a little bit more off the image. I like that. We'll take a little bit more off. And crop image crop so let's see what we got there number 
have any problem, we can just... So close, we can just go ahead and just change that a little bit. Might stretch the picture out a little bit, but that looks good. All right, I want to put my tree back. So let's go back here, and I'm going to check the tree. So there's the tree. I think that's good position, actually. It cropped off a little bit, but that's, that's good. Because I need to have my characters. So now we have clouds moved over. Someone's hiding a little bit. I can move the clouds a little bit if I want to go up a little bit with the clouds. See? So it shows. And that's pretty good. So always press the enter tree to unlock that layer before you click on another layer. And then let's bring in a um, couple of characters. Actually, I'll go ahead and use. Yeah, she uses little character. We'll do something Halloweeny. Actually, this one. I click it in. So once you click on something, you see it brings in another layer. So this guy's pretty tall. So click the shift key, click the corner, and then make him smaller. So we can bring him in. Make him a little bit bigger. Like that. Now there he is, but he kind of doesn't look like he's really in the picture, does he? We kind of need a little shading so it looks like he belongs in the picture. So in order to do that, we need a layer to put in some shading. So click on here to add a layer. The shading needs to be underneath him, so I am bringing that to the layer underneath the character. And I'll show you why in a second. The sun's right there behind him, so we're going to need some shading right here. Let's go with a little lighter shading. We're going to click on the paint. 12's too narrow, we need to up that quite a bit. It's about 75 and click on a little bit of shading so it looks like he's in the picture belongs in the picture all right so he has a little bit of shading behind him here he is a little, little bit of a head maybe head shaped so it looks like they've got the sun behind him all right so i want it to look a little bit more like a shadow so what we're going to do we're going to go to effects we're going to click on blur we're going to click on fragment and let me move this over here so you can see so this affects the distance, so let's just see as you see what happens, it kind of duplicates itself. We don't want that to happen. We want it more to be fragmented, so we need it to thin out a little bit. So it fragments it a little bit. Distance that a little bit. So you can play around with these to get the right effect. See how it's thinning out a little bit. I often, what I do, I might get something I like, but I'll do this actual section I'll do this process a couple of times to get the actual effect that I want. So you see that, how that happened there? Now it looks more like he's got a shadow. So he's in a shadow. Now, if it's like I don't want him, if he's not, the shadow's not correct, the nice thing I can do is I can click on the character himself and I can say I want to move him back a little bit. I can click on him and you see I can move him. So he's more behind his shadow. Always remember, enter to t unlock that phase. So the shadow can move. I can move the shadow around. See, I can move it here, there, everywhere. So that's the nice thing about layering. And remember about layering. Something not quite right. Or if you say, I, I need to move this guy over. You know, the character over or the shadow over. You can do it as a layer. Otherwise, it doesn't. If you don't do it in layers, you know, you can end up moving something over and then something's attached to something else and then it just messes the whole picture up. Okay, I think we'll have maybe a bird in the sky, so let's add one more layer. Let's see what's actually, let's see what we got in. Yeah, so try if we got to see a flying bird. There we go, we got some different birds here. Flying. Let's gonna have a look, we got a black one. How about this one? This one looks pretty good. Let's have the flying bird. Okay, there it is. We don't need him big, we can do him small, so let's download that. So let's go to Les. Let's go import from a file. 
Let me go to pictures and let's bring in the bird from here. There he is. He's nice and small, so he's actually a good size. And there he is flying in the sky. So that's how you can actually create pictures for your Kindle book. Just by bringing in less. If you don't like something and you want to erase something, you can quite easily erase. Like if you, if you didn't want the black lines around the sun, go to that particular layer. You can erase it. See, and it erases those black lines. I like the sun, but I want it to have more of a glowing effect. It looks like a hot sun. Then go to the shapes. Go up here to click on the circle. Now we need to know, get the color close as possible. So we'll actually highlight on the platform. Let's use our little pixel color picker gives us a nice yellow we have the shape the clips so then click on the paintbrush to see how big that is so we need that to be much bigger because we want the glow to come around here so let's take it up to say 200 nope we need to go bigger let's try 400 that looks about right so we're going to click on that. See how we've got the glow there. Well, it actually looks pretty good. Like that. It actually looks, actually looks pretty good, the color of that. Let's see how that looks. Let's, so that looks actually pretty good. I think that works pretty well. So there's an image that you can use in your book and so you can keep adding layers if you want just remember to always add layers if you want to add some text because I say Kindle books you can add often they'll have text added to them so what we're gonna do if you want to add some text right here on the page I'll show you how to do that we'll click on the bird we need to move the bird over so let's just move him over a little bit, the bird. Let's have him flying. So over here, make sure you click there so he's not on anymore. The text is often they say in a white box. So we'll go to the ships again. Let's go ahead and use the square box. We'll have it white colored. And what we're going to do here, remember, add a layer. Add a layer for the text. So you can put some text here. Alright, so we can write on here. Then add a layer, another layer on top of that for your text. So I, I did the early readers, so I used the. I said to you, to you, just make sure you use the text that people. Well, the children can read pretty easy. I find sometimes to Homer and maybe go like a 84 or something. Gives you a decent sized text. And then you just type on here. This is, oh, make sure it's in black or any color. Just click on the color and say this is Sam. And then you can click the enter key to go down. Please. He's going, this is Sam, he's going for a walk. Now, you can move the text around, make it a little bit higher, so it fits within the section, which looks pretty good. There. If you need, if the text goes beyond the white background, go back to your square background, click on this one here, select it, and then you can stretch it out. See? And it doesn't affect your writing. 
So that needs to be done. Just stretch the corners or something to give you a little bit more white space around the image. I mean around the text, sorry. Press the enter key again so you don't move anything around. Let's just move the bird a little bit more. So he's flying up there. Press enter. And there we have an image. And I say you can keep adding things as much as you want. You can add squirrels. Actually, let's just add one more thing. Let's go ahead and add Come on, I'll see if they got a squirrel in here. Oh, this one. That's a cute little squirrel, so let's... It doesn't need to be too big. Let's add him small. Where's he at? Open him up. Just put him in my pictures. Close that up. Go to the layer because say you're adding another layer on. Layer image is in the pictures. Let's find the squirrel. Okay, so here's the squirrel. Click on him, open him up, bring him down in the picture. And we could say have him maybe down here. And then press enter so he locks into place. So then we here we have move him over a little bit if you so desire press enter so there we actually have an image a picture for our book so go ahead and you can save that in one of your folders or under pictures but remember now it's a pdn which is a paint format for it to go into word you need to change it to a JPEG. So I'll keep this country back. So I'm going. So I'm going to save it under pictures. I'm going to save it as that. It will flatten the picture. So make sure you save it as a in the both formats. Save it in the paint format and save it as a JPEG format, just in case you need to make any changes. So save it in both formats. Then what I want you to do is because we're going to create our children's book is got a word and we need to make sure that the the word pages are the same size that we need our picture book for Kindle to be at so we need to change the word page so just go to the ruler double click at the top you can get rid of your margins if you want sometimes it says error uh, with margins but get rid of the margins go to the paper and it needs to be we need this page to be six and nine right six inches wide and nine high then click OK. This is fixed issues. I remove the margin, but that's fine. So don't worry about that. And then we'll bring our picture in for our book. Here it is. Bring it in. It always comes in smaller for some reason. Then just go over here because it shows us format. Just click on say 6.02. Usually is a good size to stretch it out so it goes. So you don't end with any white lines around. Click on position, click on top, click on tight. And then usually you can click it and position it in the, right in the center of the page. And it doesn't have any issues. All right, and then you can insert another blank page for your second image. Just move that one over. See, and you can start adding your pages for your Kindle book. And let me demonstrate uh, one I've just done. This is a book I've just published on Kindle called uh, Count to Ten. It's all laid out. I started as I'm publishing in Kindle I included my book cover as well. It's optional. You can upload it without your book cover or I'll upload it with it. I upload it with my book cover, then the first page, and then my copyright information. I laid out each image on here. Uh, a thing to remember too is if you have other books uh, that you've written, is that that social media page? Add a page where you've got your other books written. That way people, if they like what you've written, then they can see what other books you've written and order those as well, or buy those as well. So I always end up with a 
a page that has your other books. So once the book's already laid out, I have all my pages in here. You'll save it as your Word doc first, just to keep a copy of it. Then what you need to do is save it as a PDF. So save as a PDF, make sure you know where it's at, put it in the folder where you can find it. And then, remove this. I recommend downloading Kindle Kids Book Creator. Just go to Google, type in Kindles, oh, Kindle Kids Book Creator. Here's the page, Kindle Kids Book Creator, Kindle Kids Book Creator, it explains what you need to do, and then it also has the download for you. So you can download Kindle Books Created on Windows 7 or on a Mac. Alright, just click the download, it will download, and then you install it on your computer. Open it. We're going to create a new Kindle book. Click continue, give your book the title, the author's name, publisher for optional, what language your book's in, and where you're going to want that folder to be once it's gone through the process. I'll open the existing one that I've already got, so I'll open the one I've just done. Okay, so I'm going to open the one I've just done. Count to ten with zombies. Here it is. So once you've opened it in the Kindle book, Children's Creators, in the PDF format, it opens like this so you can see all your pictures. And I say it comes to 32 pages, which is what is this kind of standard for a children's book. Once it looks right and everything you've gone through the format, then just click on save and publish. And you'll save and publish it. And once you go to the, uh, the Kindle publishing platform, upload the content Moby file. Let me show you that. You go to Kindle publishing. So go to kdp.amazon, log into your account. Let's see if I just this is the one I've just done. So fill in the information that's necessary for the Kindle book publishing, your title, a description of your book. I'll just make this page a bit bigger. The author's information, what language it's going to be in, uh, what genre, what category it's going to be under, what age group it's recommended for, and then you can upload your, your book cover separately, and then you can, under browse, upload your book files, click on browse, and bring in that Moby, Right, bring in that Moby file. So click on Browse and then go to where it's at. So that, and then this is the one that you'll click on. Click on the content Moby that will be created in the kids' Kindle program. So click on that, click on Open, and that will open up. It'll go through a process, it'll look at it, everything. Once it's uploaded, you can preview your book. So how it would look actually on Kindle. So there's the book cover, there's the first page, copyright information, and then here's the book. And if everything looks okay, 
everything's there. So if you notice that something's not right, the page missing and everything, then just go back to your book details and then upload, make the changes and then you can upload it again. Alright, so that's how to create a children's picture book and upload it to Kindle. I do hope you found that very interesting and if you have any questions, uh, contact me at the information provided below. Once again, my name is Faby Bolton. I'm the author of nine, or soon to be nine, children's picture books that are available on Amazon. Just type in Faby Bolton and you'll see all the books I have available. So, uh, any questions? Uh, love your feedback. Love to think what you, uh, know what you think of the presentation. I say, and if you have, and if you have any questions, please go ahead and contact me. All right. Okay. Have a good day and enjoy. Bye.